going on everyone so guys today is the day that we build ourselves a computer come on now we're gonna build ourselves a gaming rig babe get to it Hey, what's going on guys? You guys are tuned in for another video, guys. And in today's video, guys, we are going to be basically working on my son's computer. He's basically requested that he also wants a gaming rig, so we're going to build him a gaming rig computer today. But before we build the gaming rig uh, computer, what I want to first say is thank you for all my subscribers that are currently viewing this video. I appreciate your likes, I appreciate your comments, and I appreciate your views. And for anyone, guys, that have tuned in that is not a subscriber, please, guys, please do me a favor, and a favor for my son, too, to hit that subscribe and hit that like button. And so we're going to be utilizing some new parts and some used parts, which this video will be absolutely helpful for those that are trying to build a computer on a budget. So this is basically going to be a computer budget build, which is absolutely what I like to do. Build it yourself. Don't pay for it, but build it. Hey guys, so this is a quick rundown of the computer hardware that we are going to install today. The first is the computer case. This is a cool master custom PC computer case. It has a custom paint job, which is supposed to be like a midnight water washed paint job. Absolutely wonderful paint job, wonderful clear coat. Next, we have our power supply, BFG power supply. That's 800 watts. Next, we have our Red Dragon. That's going to be our CPU cooler. We have our AMD socket mounting bracket. And then we have our Raiden HD 6570. That's a two gigs graphics card. Now, I do have a eight gig graphics card. However, I need to do some repairs to this graphics card. So, this is gonna be our temporary graphics card for now. Thermal paste. We have new Forza. That's DDR3 eight gig memory stick. We have seven, that's a solid state hard drive, 240 gigs. That's gonna be for the operating system. In this box, we have three LED case fans. Will be some wonderful case fans once we get that installed. We have our external hard drive. This is a 500 gig external hard drive, which is basically gonna store all of our gaming data. We don't stress out our solid state drive and that solid state drive will keep on rolling. So this is a eight, core AMD processor that is also another use component that we got for cheap this is a gigabyte motherboard which is also another use component that we got for a steel I believe it comes with a AMD FX processor it could be an eight core or it could be a six core we won't know until we open the box so those are the computer hardware components that we're going to be installing today. Let's go ahead and get this box open. Golly. Oh, okay. This box is just like glued down. The seller definitely did not want anyone to take this package. Yep, it's taped down. Use our flight here. There we go. Hmm. Whole Foods, what do you know? So what I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing a CPU here. Ow. Really? Woo. Okay. So it's dusty. 
It's dirty. It's a gigabyte uh, motherboard. It's supposed to be a gaming motherboard, um, w which is more so more efficient. Uh, it's got uh, like these microchips, um, capacitators, uh, more bus lines in technical terms uh, for processing data at a uh, efficient rate for gaming. It comes with an AMD CPU, but I'm not too sure what type of AMD CPU this is. So what I'm going to do is clean this up so that way I can visually see it. So from what I'm seeing here, guys, it says AMD FX. It's a 6300. So yes, what I was, what I pretty much, I think I stated before that it's likely this CPU is a six core. So yes, that indeed is a fact. This is indeed a six core processor. What we're gonna do is remove our six core CPU processor. That's been removed. So what we have in this box is our use AM3 FX eight core processor. Again, this processor needs work. The pins are bent, but we're going to see if we can get those pins realigned today. This is the AM3 FX8350 eight core CPU. And the issue with this eight core CPU is that it has some bent pins on the actual chip itself. So what we're gonna to do today, guys, we're gonna fix the bent pins with our Dave and Buster power card. You know, everybody go grab your Dave and Buster power card and let's go ahead and recharge this CPU. So what I typically do is do a visual inspection with my eye to see if all of the rolls line up in which they all line up except for when I get back here into this area. Now that pin, it's it's bent. It is bent, it is seriously bent, and there are some other pins that looks like they're partially bent. Um, so I can't really take my card, because I would typically take my card and run it through, like I'm sawing it in half, and that will basically help line it up. Now I'm not applying any pressure. I am not applying any pressure here. I'm just pretty much running it through its course see a pin right here that's also bent so I'm just gonna politely feed this one through and that somewhat got it aligned so I'm gonna go down the other row true damage which is right here I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab a extremely small flat head that you guys cannot see <laughs> And again, I'm going to do this with my eyes and I'm going to begin to use this to kind of straighten out the pin. Got that row lined up. You can easily repair bent pins on a CPU processor with using a magnetized light such as I have here. Uh, it allows you to pretty much get deep down and dirty to see the pins um, and be able to basically rebend the pins. Depending on how damaged your CPU pins are, you can commonly repair CPU pins with a gaming card, or you can pretty much use a very fine, thin uh, flathead. Again, it's all about the visual uh, to be able to see the pins and be able to get them realigned. The more you know. All right, guys, so before I get this motherboard all cleaned up, as you can see, 8350. That's that 8-core CPU that had bent pins, which we now have seated to our motherboard CPU socket, which means that we're good to go. So now I just need to install our CPU fan and heatsink mounting bracket, throw in some thermal paste, sit that down, and we're good to go. Let's move our motherboard off to the side. Let's get this open. Again, this is another used item. This item was on clearance at Micro Center. I love to do budget computer builds uh, because, you know, you save money. And by saving money, we're able to afford more computer components to actually get our computer built. So this is the CPU, and these are going to be the CPU brackets for the CPU heatsink and fan. This particular end goes on the back of your motherboard. This goes around your CPU. So I'm gonna take my motherboard, flip it around, take this bracket, align it up. 
And now it's lined up. So now I'm gonna take this in and I'm gonna put it on top. Take my screw, feed it through, tighten it down. All right, we start at one end and we're gonna start the top end. Now we got this in. Tighten it up. Not too much. It does not need to be like pressure tightened. It just needs to be hand tightened. All right, so let's get this thermal paste installed. The big boy. Now I'm gonna take the thermal paste spatula and whip it up. So I'm going to try to evenly spread this thermal paste. Basically my goal is to just basically get this thermal paste to cover the CPU surface. Now that we have the thermal paste installed on our CPU, I'm going to go ahead and begin mounting the CPU fan and heatsink to this CPU. First what I'm going to do is connect this to its power source which is the CPU fan. So we're going to connect the power. Let's connect it. We're going to get this installed. Sometimes you have to bend these uh sometimes you have to bend the frame down to get everything to be nice and secure there we go so guys sometimes with these universal heat sinks and fans for your CPU, you have to kind of apply some muscle in order to get everything stationary to the actual CPU bracket. So what I'm going to do now is throw in the memory card stick. This is a 8 gig DDR3 memory card. Uh, PCs nowadays, they are on DDR4. However, you know, you're DDR3. Now we're just going to push it down, get it nice and secure. So now we got eight gigs of memory. All right, guys. So this is our computer case. Again, we have the custom water wash paint job. Temperature glass. Comes with computer, comes with two case fans. Those are supposed to be LED case fans water wash paint job for nice clear coat this is where our power supply will go so let's go ahead and uh, get this motherboard installed first uh, and then we will start getting to our power supply and once we got our power supply installed then we'll slap in the other components such as hard drives and video card Put in our motherboard screws. Just typically want to start them out first. I usually switch to a different uh, screw, a different Phillips, because uh, this Phillips head, it always tends to jump whenever I try to uh, screw stuff down. All right, so we got the uh, motherboard. It's basically secured to our computer case. Um, the next things that I'm going to tackle is our cabling. Um, the reason why I'm gonna tackle this now 
is because I absolutely hate to do so. Now, when I refer to cabling, I refer to your switches. You got your power switch, power LED, hard drive LED. Uh, you also have your USB and you also have your HD audio. Now, fortunate this motherboard, it already has these wires labeled. So if you look down here, you'll see power LED, hard drive, power reset, and speaker, and then power LED, that's already there. And then here, you can pretty much see that the USB is already labeled as well. We got the cabling for the case. So this is our cabling for the case fans. These are our cabling for the case lights, such as hard drive light, LED uh, light for the power. Uh, we also have the wiring here for the USB. And we also have the wiring for the audio. So this is USB for your USB ports to the case. Now I'm gonna throw on the temporary graphics card and then I'm gonna get this power supply installed underneath here, route the power supply to connect to the motherboard, uh, the CPU power, motherboard power, and then we're gonna get that hard drive installed. And once we get the hard drive installed, cable it, and then guys we will be able to fire this up make sure this motherboard works and then install the operating system take the power supply and flip it around so the fan sits on the bottom Now we got the power supply uh, nice and secure. Um, now I'm gonna move on to the cabling process. Right, so let me get this cable connected. It's nice and tight. This is gonna be tedious to get this cable in. There we go. And I'm gonna feed this cable back through here. Alright, so we got all of that connected. So what I'm going to do now is install the temporary graphics card as well as we're gonna install a wireless card. And the reason why we're doing wireless card is because this PC is going in an area where there's no ethernet connection. Just to get that card in there. Goodness gracious, how tight. Now 
Now, what I'm going to do is install my fans for the computer and then get to installing the hard drive. So I'm not going to go through step by step of installing the fans. I'm not going to do step by step of installing the fans. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is install two up top, then one on the rear. And once I have that, then I'm going to basically take our solid state drive and install at the bottom and cable that all through and then i'll get back with you guys to show you guys the final uh setup of how everything's cabled and connected and the only thing that's honestly will be left is just to do another power cycle just to confirm that every component has power and then i can move on to actually doing installing the operating system you want to note the flat surface means air is coming is ventilating out airflow in airflow out okay so flat surface airflow this way okay now if we put this on this side air is going to flow that way okay so always remember flat means air is coming out of that area since we're going to position this fan above here we want the airflow to go out so that way, we, when that heat rises, we want that heat to escape, all right? So it's gonna go flat surface. It's gonna be flat against this frame. And that way, heat will rise out. So, got it going through. Take a screw. I'm gonna put a screw at the top. Okay. If you screw it too tight, you're basically going to uh, destroy the plastic because um, these screws are just basically threading on the plastic. So that's that. I'm gonna move on to the next and I'll get back with you guys soon. fans got the video card got the wireless power supply everything inside is assembled there you guys go so you guys can see the inside got our two case fans that installed at the top one on the rear and the case fans that comes with this computer case in the front we have our CPU fan and heat sink. We also have our hard drive, solid state hard drive is connected. Um.